Welcome to All My God Ministries. I am your host, Reverend Anita Morris. I am coming before you before the holiday we celebrate Mother's Day. Oftentimes people are without their mother or their father. So on this occasion, I will mention to you, my mom has been deceased for over nearly 10 years going on. And my dad had just passed away April 28th. We just funeralized him and he will be given military honors in uh, Union Cemetery. It's scheduled for May 14th for military honors. So those of us who have uh, parents that are deceased, it says when you're without mother or father, some people are called orphans. Now, obviously we don't go to an institution and say, oh, take care of us. But those people who will look after another in communities and knowing that they take us in as their own, daughter or son so some of us who have church mothers and in, uh, institutions faith institutions in which we grew up or communities or whatever your sense of belonging is there's others who are always looking at your best interest to continue to allow you to thrive and it reads in the bible it says even if my mother or father forsake me god will hold me up he will uphold me he will take care of me he will lift me up so know that you are not without during this Mother's Day, during this time of celebration of a profound uh, mark on humanity, that this is how humanity and procreation begins from the womb of the mother. And we celebrate mothers and we say thank you so much for giving us life and going through that nine or more stages of pregnancy, nine months or more to have and, and to consider us and to do the work that was necessary and to build a family and to have great relations and to continue to equip and to grow your family and not giving up on life. And so we thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us life and life more abundantly and you placed your trust in us over your stewardship over humanity that we too can encounter being proactive procreative and also to be pro-life and we thank you lord god for your love that surpasses human understanding even those things that people have considered and have taken into their own hands and probably even taking the life of their own child. I pray, Lord, your forgiveness upon their hearts, although they may be heavy at this time. I pray, Lord God, they seek your guidance because it is Mother's Day, and oftentimes people get tunnel vision and, and found themselves in guilt and succumb with condemnation. So we ask, Lord God, that you're, you are the Prince of Peace. You are the God of Peace. And so we ask, Lord God, that you will mend their hearts, those who are suffering, those that are hurting in their hearts, those who have made some missteps and um, errors in their lives when they were youthful. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would honor their prayers of, of repentance and that, Lord God, they will seek your face that you might be found and that they forgive you, Father, and they forgive themselves. And Lord God, that they have a good conscience become boldly to the throne of grace, obtaining help in their time of need. In Jesus' most precious name, we thank you, God, for all these things. Amen. So, in the word of God, it reads in 1 Peter, the hope of eternal life. All praise to God the Father of 1 Peter chapter 1. All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is by his great mercy that we have been born again, brought into the kingdom of God, born again afresh, not by this world of the womb or flesh or what men can conceive and a woman can conceive by man, but what God can conceive through the spirit of faith. Through our act of our faith, we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have priceless inheritance. Remember how we mentioned earlier on 
that there are some parents who have gone to be with the Lord, who have gone from this earth to uh, an eternal kingdom. And so this is the expectation and, and a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. As we experience in our mortal bodies, change and decay every day. I can go and cut myself, I get bruised, and the body will continue to heal itself or it will leave a scar or a mark. I can go in there and as I get old or whatever, I can get wrinkles and become, uh, and, and my, my bones and skin will become frail as I, as I move up and mature in years. So that is going to happen, beloved, as we live here on earth. But in the heavens, it's pure and it's undefiled. Amen. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So we have hope what we don't see. And that is faith. The evidence of things not seen, all things hoped for. So continue on with 1 Peter verse 6. So truly be glad, he asks, and he commends us. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. Even after the grief, after the storm is gone, those people who have lost loved ones and significant others or mother. And you know, during the process of grief, some people say that grief can bring or uh, a love of a death one, uh, what you call it, the death of a loved one can bring good and behaviors out of people or bad behaviors. It can bring the good and bad out of all behaviors. And that's a trial. When people go through different trials and tribulations of the different stages of grief, it says, so truly be glad there is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you have to endure many trials for a little while, these trials will show you or show that your faith is genuine when you continue to stand the test of your trials. To know that you have done what you call you were called to do and ministering to your loved ones and being there and, and you've done in what was in your stewardship what God charged you to do and you have helped to bring life and bring hope to humankind. He says these trials will show you that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire, tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, okay? So you don't have to compare it to this maternal, what do you call it, material world, okay? It's far precious than gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. So oftentimes, beloved, people don't get to that significant trust until they reach their internal peace when they are in exchange of leaving this earth to finally rest in God's embrace. But God says you can choose to trust now. That is your salvation because we go from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from strength to strength. And that is the re reward that God gives us, the salvation of our souls. Even in the biblical New Testament of Corinthians, it says, it reads to continue to live out our salvation walk out our own salvation that is daily to walk and exercise our own salvation things that bring us wholeness healing not just eternal salvation in the by and by but even now those things that we have a, 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 a lively a living hope we call it and not a dead hope a dead hope is like when you are when you're hopeless you know sometimes we will get hopeless but it's not hopeless to the point we have to cast off restraints and we're confused about everything and there's no peace. But when we are have a eternal hope, when we have a living hope that's founded in trust in God, 
we have a living hope that is steadfast, is grounded, and is going to bring about joy. Even though we have to face sorrow, okay? It's going to be sorrow, okay? But when we face sorrow, sorrow, we will also know the embodiment of God's joy within our souls. That the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Hallelujah. It says this salvation was something even the prophets of old days wanted to know more about when they prophesied about, prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. So they were told, but they could never experience it. So they wondered what time or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory afterward. Remember in the book of Isaiah, it recalls about Jesus. He was bruised for our transgression. He was wounded for our sins. And with his stripes, we are healed. So that, my beloved, is again, holistic healing within the embodiment of Christ through his wounds, that his blood that was shed for us. We just recently celebrated um, resurrection just a month ago, not even, right? But we have to recall those things and benefits on the cross that was meant for us, for our salvation. And though the prophets were told this, but they could not experience for themselves of that great faith, of that enjoyment that Christ healed them, forgiven them of their sins. And they didn't have to sacrifice bulls and calves and other things for an offering. God sent his son Jesus to be an atonement, to redeem us, to be our pardon for all of our sins of all humanity. He laid upon the sins of us all upon Jesus. And he raised Jesus into everlasting life. And with that hope, we also will be raised into everlasting life. It says, they were told that their message were not for themselves, the prophets. But for you, and now this good news, it's good news, has been announced to you by those who preached in the power of the Holy Spirit. Not in the power of religious spirit, not in the power of tradition, but by the power of the Holy Spirit that comes and, des and descends upon us from God. Meaning, it's from heaven and it's brought to us by the Spirit of God, by our faith being born again not of human flesh but by our belief and our faith in god this holy spirit is sent from heaven and given to us it is all so wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen amen amen and so god will continue to go on and ask you about the holy practice of living and in chapter one and also in, in chapter two how to get rid of all evil behavior be done with all deceit hypocrisy jealousy and all unkind speech like newborn babies you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation so if you have those different things going on how would you ever mature and experience that great salvation of your faith and it says cry out for more nourishment cry out for this nourishment now that you have had tasted that the Lord's kindness and it says taste in the Psalms reads taste and see that the Lord is good amen and so we have been given a living hope beloved a house not built by straw but it's built it on the foundation of christ it says living stones for god's house in in chapter 2 of, of first peter chapter 2 you are coming to christ who is the living cornerstone of god's temple he was rejected by people but he was chosen by god for great honor so don't be afraid beloved even christ said if they rejected me they will also reject you so as they're rejecting you, God is preserving you and declared there's going to be great honor for you. Even in Isaiah 41, it reads that I love you. You are honored and you are precious, says the Lord. And that, my beloved, he's given that to each of us. 
okay, in verse 5 of chapter 2 of First Peter, it says, You are living stones, and that God is building into his spiritual temple. What more, you are his holy priest, through the mediation of Jesus Christ. You offer spiritual sacrifices that pleases God. As the scriptures say, I am placing a cornerstone of Jerusalem, the city of peace, chosen for great honor, and anyone who trusts in Jesus will never be disgraced. As long as you trust in Jesus, you will not be disgraced. You will not have that sense of hopelessness, and there will always be a mediator before God. That is Jesus Christ, mediating on your behalf to see you through your trials, your tests, and know that you have been given a living hope because he called you as living stones. As you see different stones, different colors, we're all faceted in God's embrace to offer up a spiritual sacrifice to God. And that is what Peter is mentioning in verse 7. It says, yes, you who trust him recognize the honor God has given him. But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone somewhere people will stumble upon because they don't fully understand or have the spiritual discernment. And he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey God's word, and so they meet the fate that was planned for them. Even in Jeremiah 29, 11, it reads, For I know the plans that I have for you, plans of peace and not of evil, says the Lord, plans to give you a future to hope and expect it and eternal hope. But those who reject will also have a hope, but it will not probably be eternal hope. That's what God is mentioning because they are stumbling because they rejected God. In verse 9 it says, But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. And as a result, beloved, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, because we were all outcasts, of Israel because we were not part of the Israel faith but we come and we came engrafted through the blood of Christ Jesus again that's why we celebrate Easter Resurrection Sunday because Christ has engulfed everybody and said everyone has fallen of, upon sin and all have fallen of the glory of God so one can't do without the other we have been engrafted by the blood by the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ making one spiritual house once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. And that's what we are doing during this Mother's Day, that we can come fully to the throne of grace, obtaining mercy in time of need, in time of our help. And sometimes people look for other help temporarily. They look to drugs and look to alcoholism and all different kinds of addictions. But God said, I want you to trust me. I want you to rely on my strength and not on human power, but on my strength to fully enter, counter me and encounter me. And I will continue to bring you hope, a living hope, and that your joy will be fulfilled. And we thank you, Lord God, for this time. We thank you, Lord God, for upholding us with your right victorious hand. We thank you, Lord God, that you never left us, nor will you ever leave us, nor forsake us. We thank you, Lord God, for being merciful upon our sins. And we just thank you, Lord God, for your awesome, inspiring deeds. And thank you, Lord God, for using us for your glory. And thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to continue to love our enemies, to do, do good to those who offend us, Lord God, and to pray for those who misuse us. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, and all these things you said to give you thanks. In Jesus' most precious name, amen.